Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, I purchased a Nikon Z6 II that, of course, is one of the newest Nikon cameras. And what I found is none of the applications I had would read the Fujifilm RAW file. The camera was just too new. I tried opening the RAW files in Lightroom, Capture One, On One Photo RAW, Exposure X6. None of those applications would open up and read and uh, then ultimately allow me to process those uh, Nikon Z6 II RAW files. Now, Luminar 4 did open the RAW file, but I actually did a video on this in the past. Um, Luminar has a unique feature in that it will open up just about any RAW file there is, even if it doesn't have actual support for the RAW file. So it opened the RAW file, but what happens when it does that, it doesn't really have support for the raw file, you're not actually editing the raw data. You're editing the little JPEG that is embedded inside of the raw file. And again, I did a video explaining that, and I'll have that video linked in the description below this video. And my Nikon Z6 II raw files, same thing in Luminar. Uh, it really wasn't reading the raw data. So, this kind of harkens back to a lot of emails I've received over the years from people that have bought brand new cameras, cameras that are just newly released by the manufacturer, and they found that most often Lightroom, they're using Lightroom most often, just isn't reading the RAW file. What can you do? Well, in this video, let's talk about it. What can you do? It doesn't matter if you have a Nikon Z6 II or any newer camera, all right? If you find that whatever RAW processing application you're using isn't reading the RAW file, Here's some things you could do until that software you use is updated for that specific camera. Now, first of all, let's go to Adobe Camera Raw Converter. It's the Adobe DNG Converter, they call it actually. Uh, with this application, sometimes you could, uh, by batch, load in a whole folder full of those raw files and it will convert those raw files to a DNG file that can be read by all those applications I mentioned. Unfortunately, this application too has to be updated by Adobe. Often, this application is updated before Lightroom or Photoshop are. So, sometimes you'll have the uh, happiness and joy of finding that this will actually open the RAW file and convert it for you where Lightroom and or Photoshop can't open that file. Unfortunately for the Nikon Z6 II, this application does not open those raw files either. It hasn't been updated for that yet. But as I mentioned, sometimes it gets updated before Lightroom and Photoshop gets updated. So you may be able to use this. So check out the Adobe Digital Negative Converter. I'll have a link to that in the description below my video. Uh, also, it's free. All right, so actually every application I'm gonna talk about is free. So this is free uh, if you want to try that. Now. The other thing you could do is go to your uh, camera's manufacturer's website and see if they have any software. For example, Canon has Digital Photo Professional. They also have a tablet version called Digital Photo Professional Express. This is, as far as I know, it's free. I'm not a Canon shooter, but it's free. And this will uh, usually be updated so it could read the RAW files from their brand new Canon cameras. So you could check this out. I'll have a link to this in the description below this video as well. Um, if you have a brand new Canon camera and the RAW files aren't being read by your RAW processor, just use this. Now, of course, there's a bit of a learning curve. You're gonna have to learn how to use this software. Um, maybe though, what you could do is just use this software if you don't wanna go learning it, to load in your RAW files and just convert those RAW files to like TIFFs or something that you could then, or DNG if that's an option, and then uh, process your images in whatever application you're used to using, like Lightroom. But save your RAW files. Um, what I would recommend you do, if you could use the software to convert them to DNG, do that. If not, the next best option is TIFF. Convert your uh, files to the, one of those two formats, then load those converted images into, let's say you're using Lightroom, load it into Lightroom, but uh, keep your RAW files and put them in the RAW files in the same folder as your converted TIFF and or DNGs. Then go into Lightroom or whatever, again, application you're using and process your TIFF files or DNG files. Then whenever Adobe or whatever application you're using updates the software so that it could actually process those uh, native RAW files, 
just copy the processing you did to those TIFFs or DNG to the raw file and you should be good to go. Now I mentioned that most uh, camera manufacturers have software that will process their raw files. This is uh, Canon's. Um, Fuji has file converters. They used to have something I, I recall several years ago that actually would process raw files. I don't think they have it anymore. It only worked on Windows machines. Uh, it wasn't for um, a Mac computers. I don't think they have that anymore. But anyway, they have these uh, two different file converters. They have this one that's powered by Silky Picks. Uh, from what I understand, this is kind of clunky. Now it only converts the file to a JPEG. So you're kind of stuck there. They also have another one here, the Fujifilm X-RAW Studio. I don't uh, shoot Fujifilm anymore. I used to, as many of you know. But, uh, so I don't have either of these loaded on my computer. But maybe someone who does use either of the two uh, Fujifilm applications could comment on it. Uh, from what I've understood in the past from talking to other people, it's a little bit clunky to use. And that's what I found with most of this uh, camera manufacturer raw processing software. Uh, but Fujifilm X-RAW Studio, I believe, just does conversions as well. I may be wrong on that. Uh, but if anyone uses it, comment below and let us know. But again, uh, if you're not a Fujifilm or Canon shooter, there's other, you know, just if you're, let's say, you know, um, you know, shooting Panasonic or something, just see what software they have available. Uh, just Google it and hopefully you'll find something. Now, I am a Nikon shooter primarily. Um, I do have some Sony cameras now too. Uh, but Nikon has what they call Capture NX-D, uh, which is a pro raw processor. And it reads my uh, Nikon Z6 II files just fine. It's, again, free. I'll have it linked in the description below. Uh, it's really clunky. It's kind of difficult to use, in my opinion. Uh, what I recommend is if you don't really want to go and learn how to use this, you can see it has a lot of tools. You could rotate, straighten, do all this good stuff. Um, then, you know, if you pick an image... Uh, you want to work on, let's say you want to work on this image here. Over on the right-hand side, it has editing tools uh, right here. You know, it's got, uh, you could copy processing from one to the other. There's exposure compensation, white balance. There's uh, picture control. These are actually the camera profiles that are inside of your camera that you could use uh, to uh, change your image. Like inside your camera, you could shoot with a vivid camera control or, or picture control, they call it. And you actually could then just change these in post uh, if you prefer. You want to reset anything, you hit right there. Uh, below that is uh, tone controls. You actually have two different um, groupings of tone. Uh, the first one is brightness, contrast, saturation. The next one over is highlight protection, shadow protection, and active delighting. So I have that turned off in my camera, but you could actually uh, use it here. Um, as well. Also, it was somewhere else, and I think it might have been, I can't remember where, but somewhere else in the, uh, here it is, active D lighting right here. So if I wanted to actually use the camera setting of active D lighting, you can see I didn't use it at all, but let's say I used normal active D lighting, that is the exposure I would have received on my RAW file. Uh, but most of those other post-processing applications, like, you know, Lightroom, Capture One, On One, Photo Raw, Exposure, Access, Luminar, they don't recognize active D-lighting. So that's why I just have that off, uh, typically, because I don't use uh, Capture, uh, or I don't use uh, Capture NX-D. So this is, again, the, the uh, Nikon, or Nikon, if you prefer, prefer, version or software to use to process their RAW files. And it does read the Nikon Z6 II uh, RAW files. So really, that's my recommendations. Try first the Adobe uh, DNG converter to convert uh, to convert your images uh, raw files to DNG. Hopefully that works. If that doesn't work, then check and see if there's any software available uh, from the Cameo manufacturer that will either convert the file and/or process the file for you. Now, personally, as far as the Nikon uh, Capture NX-D is concerned, I don't use it to process these files. I will convert them to TIFF. So I'll click on one, hold the shift key down, click on the other one so they're all selected. I'll go to convert files and I'll, won't, I'll convert it to a TIFF 16-bit and I'll just say where I'm um, sending it to. I embed the ICC profile, make sure that's checked. I do not use any compression and then I will process those TIFF files and again I'll just keep those raw files with the TIFF files so when 
down the road, a Lightroom or Adobe Updates Lightroom so that it could read these Nikon Z6X2, Z6 II uh, files. I'll just copy the processing over uh, to the raw file and I'm good to go. So if you have any other suggestions, I know there's a lot of um, free software out there that will read raw files. If anyone uses anything specific, let us know in the comments below. I'd be interesting, interested to hear it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.